Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. Today we're in the Apache and we're looking at BAM, Battle Area Management using Priority Fire Zones and No Fire Zones. Before I give an overview, let me first explain the problem. Here we are, I've got my flight, me as one, Matrix as two, Simba as three, Push as four. Good Hello. morning. We are linked together as primary data link members so we can share data between our aircraft. We are attacking this large area in front of us. The red guys are bad units, the blue guys are good units. Until now, we had no way of really telling which member to attack which targets. We could roughly say Simba attack left, Matrix attack right, and I'll go down the middle, but it was very difficult to organize as well as that. Not hitting friendly targets was very difficult. We did lots of friendly fire. So we have a method in the Apache that can take care of this problem for us battle area management. We can lay out priority fire zones and no fire zones. Priority fire zones are to be targeted by each Apache and the no fire zone is an area that none of us may target. Let me draw some example fire zones on here. So these eight tanks could be in this fire zone, these eight in this fire zone and these eight in this fire zone and this could be a no fire zone. The priority fire zones and no fire zones serve two real purposes to a pilot. First, they act as a geographic visual area where to attack or not attack. We'll see it on our TSD screens. As well as that, these two types of fire zone automatically communicate with our fire control radar and the fire control radar will automatically prioritize targets it sees that are in the relevant priority fire zone and it will not prioritize targets that it sees in a no-fire zone. A really important distinction to make now is it does not stop the fire control radar from targeting targets that are in the no-fire zone. It will still target them, but it will prioritize targets in the priority fire zone. If a no-fire zone encroaches in to a priority fire zone, then the no-fire zone will take priority. So that explains what priority fire zones and no fire zones are for and how they relate to our helicopters. Next, let's show doing it. So the first thing I want to check is that my three guys are on my data link set up as primary members. Without that, none of this will work. So, com, preset one, network. I am G1, Matrix is G2, Simba and Poosh, and they're all primary members. Great. So all of this will work. Next, let's move over to the TSD. So this is going to be very difficult to do if I can't see the target. So I'm going to go to show here and I'm going to go to coordinate show and I'm going to turn on friendly control measures and enemy control measures. These are brought through from the mission editor. Now, before we start drawing fire zones, I notice there's a lot of white on this chart. White is bad for drawing fire zones. It will make the fire zones hard to see. So I'm actually going to go to map here and change from chart to satellite image, much darker gray. That will be much better to draw over and turn off map. Now we go to BAM at the bottom here, our battle area management, where we do our fire zones. Our first option here, type. We can have PF or NF, priority fire zones, what we want to fire at, NF no fire zones what we don't want to fight at let's start with priority fire zones next option when we physically draw our fire zones how do we want to do it in an auto mode manual or a target reference point mode the auto mode means that i would physically draw a square or a four pointed polygon and it would automatically split that into the amount of sub fire zones that i want to create in this case four why four it's because it defaults to the amount of primary members on our data link, which is four, including me. A manual mode means that we'll just draw one square or quad pointed polygon at a time and target reference point I'll probably come back to. So let's start with auto. Again, how many sub fire zones do we want to make? Four. Do we want to draw as a box? Or as a line let me show you the box method first next we need to bring our cursor over onto the screen which i'm sure you all know how to do by now so i move the cursor over i bump it over right i'm gonna go to there and i'm gonna press cursor d press enter there move it over here and press it there and because i had auto mode on it's automatically spit it into the four fire zones so priority fire zone one two three and four before we do more drawing let's talk about activation 
As standard, none of these fire zones are activated. By activating a fire zone, that allows it to communicate with the fire control radar, as I said before. Without it activated, it will not do that. Note that we can only activate one priority fire zone per each primary member. So let's just show that in action. So if I go to activation here, currently none of these fire zones are active. But if I wanted to activate priority fire zone one for me, the own ship, I would go there. You can see it moves around here on the line that shows that PF1 is activated for me. Other guys will have to activate their own priority fire zones when I send this data over to them. So we'll worry about that later. So let me just turn that off for now. Next, delete. If I want to delete, it will delete all priority fire zones on the TSD. Yes, yes, I do. Next, I want to show the line method. Very similar, but this time we draw each point. So point, 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 and a third, and it will link it up. Note that box method will always draw the box in line with the TSD. The line method allows us to draw a non-square quad pointed polygon at any angle we like and as you can see it divides it up into four because it's the auto method with a reference line as the first line okay uh, let's delete that next let's go on to manual this is super simple uh, if we start with box mode there this just allows us to draw a single fire zone so first box method as you saw before delete yes line method same as you saw before there we go. Delete that. Finally, target point reference. So far, what we've shown is pretty accurate ways of drawing fire zones around the exact area you want to draw them around. Target point reference, we really consider a quick fire way of splitting up an area into four sub zones. So let's say, for instance, we have a village up here about that big, about six kilometers by six kilometers. And I wanna very quickly and roughly split that into four segments. First, I would want to tell the system the size of the segments, and I do that down here with kilometers. Do I want each bit here to be one kilometer by one kilometer, two or three kilometers by three kilometers? Let's do three. So each of these sub-fire zones is three by three. Put it over the village, press enter, and I've got four quick zones on that village. Uh, and delete that. Uh, one more thing I should show is that if I'm drawing a fire zone, let me go and start drawing there and there, and I want to clear the last point entered, I've got the clear option here, pip, and that takes us back. And again, that's fire zones. Now let's do no fire zones. Pip. This works a little differently. We have to first select which no fire zone slot we want to operate with. So select one to eight. Let's just start with, in fact, for interest, let's start with two. So I can draw no fire zone two. I can only draw one no fire zone at a time. And again, it can be a box or line created. Let's just do box there to there. Note it's yellow instead of white. No fire zones work differently because I've not actually drawn a no fire zone. All I've drawn is a square. I know that because it doesn't say a no fire zone reference in the middle. Remember with priority fire zones, it said PF1 and whatnot. So to make that into a fire zone, I now need to press accept. So press accept there. I'm going to create another one. So let's select fire zone seven and let's draw it over here. And let's draw it as a line just to show I can draw it as a line. All right. As well as accepting it, I can activate it and accept it if I want. So if I did that, I've accepted it and turned it into a no fire zone, but I've also activated it. The difference is you can see the dots moving around the edge. So in this configuration, I have two no fire zones on my TSD, but only this one is activated. And therefore only this one is the one currently in operation that will communicate with my fire control radar and whatnot. Why might I want to do that? Well, real missions are dynamic. The friendly units may move from zone to zone. So I may want to have the no fire zones drawn out in advance, but only activate the ones that are dynamically of relevance. That's why. And that's why they work differently to priority fire zones. Note, in case I forgot to say, no fire zones can overlap priority fire zones and the no fire zone will take preference. 
Uh, right, let me delete that. So we all start from afresh. I deleted uh, No Fire Zone 7. Now I need to select No Fire Zone 2. Delete that as well. Right, and back to Priority Fire Zone. So let's do the actual mission. So the actual plan for today, guys. This Priority Fire Zone here, number one, I'll take myself. This one here, Matrix, you'll take. This one here, Simba, you'll take. Poosh, I'm going to keep you in reserve. And obviously, no one is going to be targeting the no fire zone. So let's get drawing viewers. Uh, each of us has eight missiles, so eight targets each. That works out very convenient. So we're going to start on priority fire zones. Manual, that's all fine. And let's start drawing. So my fire zone is going to be there. Pip. Uh, matrixes is going to be here. And Simbers is going to be here. Drawing within the footprint of the TSD. Done. Next, the no fire zones. Uh, no fire zone one will be fine. Let's draw it there. 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 Oops. Too close to the edge. There. There. Done. Um, I want to activate and accept this no fire zone. Pip. Next, we need to look at assigning fire zones to our various flight members. The no fire zones are automatically assigned to everyone, as you would imagine they should be. But the priority fire zones are individually assigned to different members. So I go to priority fire zone and I go to assign. I want to assign priority fire zone one to me. So with one selected here, own. That's now mine. I want to assign matrix to fire zone two. So fire zone two selected, matrix. Fire zone three, I want to assign to Simba. Push is in reserve. Note, you can assign two members to a single fire zone, but each member may only have one fire zone assigned to them. So I've got my three guys assigned to my three priority fire zones, and like I said, we're all assigned to our no fire zone. Next, I'm going to get out of assign, and we're going to think about sending this data over. How do we want to send it? Do we want to send just priority fire zones? or just no fire zones, or with either selected, go to transmit both, and it will send fire zones and no fire zones. Next, I need to choose who am I gonna send it to? Two, three, but I don't want to send it to Poosh. Remember, Poosh is in reserve, he doesn't need this data. He's not gonna be firing yet. All right, I'm gonna send on VHF L1, punch it. All right, let me know when you get the data. All right. I know they've got it, viewers, because it would send uh, a non-acknowledgement report there if they hadn't received it. So, guys, you see three fire zones and one no fire zone, correct? A firm. A firm. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do before we prosecute, guys, and that is to uh, activate the zones that we're going to be actually using. So, I am going to activate my zone here. So, I'm going to go to... Uh, priority fire zones i'm going to go to activate and i'm going to go one i've activated that for myself remember for the fire control radar to actually do something it needs to be activated uh matrix please activate priority fire zone two and simba three and report back when you're done done right let's go and do the mission guys uh so i'm going to do that i'm going to do that i'm going to turn on my fire control i'm running where i'm running out of fuel viewers but it will be okay fire control radar make it my selected site and that's it i'm going to take off and find those targets guys you may fire at will on your selected areas obviously or your priority fire zones i should say so you remember at the very beginning of the, if the video we can use it as a geographical visual reference to aim our helicopter in the right direction which i'm trying to do now aiming at the right place i'm going to start scanning with my radar uh, you can obviously see the overlay of the uh, priority fire zone on my radar. And when targets start being populated by my fire control radar, it will prioritize the ones in my activated priority fire zone. Right, I'm going to start engaging, guys. I'm going to waz my missiles and I'm going to start Rifle. pushing out missiles. Rifle. Rifle. Now, I made these zones quite big. They might be a bit too big to do it show off exactly what I want to show here viewers yeah it's going to start cycling back to the other ones let's carry on though I've shot three kills arriving the fire control radar has a range of about five miles I've made these fire zones about five miles each uh, new targets coming in let me automatically reference to them by pressing NTS there let's start firing more rifle yeah I'm starting to get into azimuth limit problems here 
Maybe it's a little bit big. There's still one I haven't seen yet. There it is. Gotcha. Just realised I didn't have my eye heads on. How stupid of me. Missile not ready. Oh, I've run out of missiles. All right. I've killed seven out of eight targets. And I accidentally fired at one target twice because I was being silly viewers. Because I didn't have my eye heads on. Because I was concentrating so much on the uh, radar. But the proof of concept is there in that... It prioritized the targets within my activated uh, priority fire zone. And the boys, I'm sure, are busy killing theirs. How are you guys getting on? Eight targets prosecuted. Well done. Matrix is much better than me, obviously. So, um, Matrix, uh, either put yourself in hover or whatever, or land. It's up to you. Right. Best landing I can do, viewers. Oof. No, no, it's all the ones I have. I ended up firing at dead targets. Roger, okay, we've prosecuted as best we can. Me and Simba simply aren't as good as Matrix at doing this, but we've done the best we can. Right, guys, put yourself in a position ready to receive now, because obviously, viewers, I need to show us receiving uh, fire zone. So the role play is that Poosh has just found some other targets on the way home, say, from this mission that need prosecuting. I want to show you what happens when that happens. So Poosh, can you please draw a priority fire zone? around the new targets which are down here somewhere from memory when ready can you please send them to us okay there's three t-55s mm -hmm. okay received so he sent a priority fire zone note that it's not uh, he did not send any no fire zones which would show as nf zone viewers right i'm going to go to uh com message fire zone received, received. Uh, he sent it twice for some reason, but it doesn't matter. That's fine. Uh, it's from G4, uh, which is push, as we know. I'm going to store it. And ta-da! Uh, where is, is it? Where is it? Uh, I'm going to get rid of BAM. I'm going to zoom out. Ha, it's not there. Why would that be, viewers? Uh, because this. You. Yep, yep, that's right. Uh, because show, viewers, I need to go here, and I need to turn inactive zones on, which basically means show these fire zones when we're not in the BAM page here. So let's get out there and that should have fixed it. Uh, there it is. There's the uh, fire zone. So what it's done is it's overwritten any fire zones I had on my TSD with the ones that were just sent from Poosh, which is that one there. Note, the no fire zone did not get overwritten because he did not send. I probably could have been a bit smarter in the way I set it out. Maybe I should have had the no fire zone being a more of a thing by pushing it in to a fire zone. But, you know, live and learn. It's incredibly useful. And I would say, to be honest, it's essential because otherwise you're fighting blind. Yeah, it seems very tricky to start with. But once you get the workflow, it becomes instinctive. And then the intuitiveness of it really hits home and it is really powerful. Go and use it, viewers. Bye bye.